Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Cothran Center here at Mars Hill University. My name is Jimmy Knight, and today I am joined by Mike Kelly. I am pleased as everything to be able to introduce you to Mr. Kelly. Uh, he is a Mars Hill graduate class of 1982. He was a collegiate athlete. He played basketball here on the Hill. Um, and I can tell you from personal perspective that he and his wife, Melinda, are valued and cherished members of the Mars Hill community here. Uh, they give of themselves at, uh, at an untold level. Uh, and it's just been a pleasure to get to know Mike over the years. Um, a little bit about his professional pedigree. Uh, he has worked at companies that you might have heard of, Macy's, Michelin. Uh, he's also a life and executive uh, coach for folks and a certified fin financial planner. Uh, and for our purposes, most importantly, uh, he is a member of our board of trustees. So, um, Mike, how are you doing today? I am doing fantastic, uh, Jimmy. Thank you very much for having me, and thank you for your very kind words, and also for the wonderful work you're doing with uh, our students at Mars Hill University. The work you're doing will pay dividends, certainly in our lifetimes, but I would also say beyond. There is an eternal perspective here that uh, I think our students are getting, and, and it's gonna pay dividends as we all move forward. Yeah. Uh, the Cawthorn Center is, is really kind of a, a very exciting uh, development here on campus, and uh, I'm certainly loving this job uh, much more than any other job that I've had in the 25 years of um, corporate experience that I had previous to this. So uh, these videos that we're doing, it's, it's basically, uh, for those of you who are listening and, and watching in, uh, it's how-to tips, things that you need to know in job searching, uh, in this economy or the upcoming economy, uh, as we, we all know, economies are really ridiculously hard to, uh, to figure out what they're going to do next. And so it's always best to be prepared. And so today we're going to talk about uh, a tool that is oftentimes overlooked, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, if you are familiar at all with, uh, with LinkedIn, you hear people all the time saying, you've got to have a LinkedIn account but hardly ever telling you what to do with the LinkedIn account. And um, as I was going over uh, my LinkedIn account, I, I follow Mike on, on a pretty, uh, well, I just, I follow Mike and I see him on a pretty consistent basis posting things. And so I thought this would be a really good opportunity. Let's ask Mike what he does about LinkedIn. So if you would, please um, tell us the importance of LinkedIn to you. Uh, insights that you may have in terms of using it fully and how to get the most out of it. Yeah, you know, LinkedIn is a tool that wasn't around when I graduated from Morris Hill in 82, a long time ago. Uh, so it's something that uh, has evolved in our technology age and it's something that I learned about a number of years ago as a corporate executive and it's something that I started to study. And I'll tell you, LinkedIn is a tool that you always learn something new. I'm continuing to learn. But when I think of LinkedIn, I think of the fact that uh, Microsoft acquired LinkedIn in 2016 for $26 billion. So they spent a ton of money on this particular tool. That's what I refer to it as. And you wonder why. Well, part of the reason is because they have 575 million monthly uh, active users. And about 260 million of those are active monthly users. So you have a lot of people are on, uh, on LinkedIn. In addition to that, 20 million companies are listed on the site. And with respect to recruiting, 90% of recruiters out there use LinkedIn. So it's a tool that we all have to, if we are certainly college students, but no matter who you are, you should have a presence on, on LinkedIn as early as possible, at least set up an account. Uh, so it's very, really, really important. But the thing that I think about with LinkedIn or anything that I decide to get involved with is, why do I want to use it? Using it for the sake of using it? I mean, yeah, but, but how do I maximize the tool? Well, for me, it's getting a good picture of what success looks like. And I use it to learn. There's a ton of information out there. There's a lot of information out there. You can filter that by joining various groups that you're interested in or following various companies. I follow Michelin, I follow Macy's, I've worked for those companies in the past. 
But you want to start by building a professional profile. And that profile is going to basically put you out there amongst the 260 million, uh, 260 million active users. Uh, you're, you're there. And when you're there, you want to make sure that you're showing up properly. So we'll, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about how your profile should look. But you also want to be active. You just don't want to have a profile. You want to be active. You want to go out and like certain things that are interest, of interest to you. You want to comment on various posts that you see that might be interesting to you. Maybe you learn something. Maybe you have an idea. Maybe you want to encourage someone who has a certain position that you basically you support. For example, leading people in an ethical way is something I, I, I feel really strongly about. Being a strong leader and caring about people. Being someone who is a person of high moral character, doing the right thing. When I see certain types of posts out there like that, I like them, or I, either I'll go out and, and make a comment. So you want to be active there as well. And you also want to share. There are opportunities to share information on LinkedIn, your own, or you want to share other people's information. In addition to that, you want to find a way to connect with people that you have an interest in connecting with. There are people in your network now that are on LinkedIn. You may not be connected with them on LinkedIn. There are opportunities to connect with them. You may have a, an informal or personal relationship. You can build business relationships on LinkedIn with them and other people as well. So there are a lot of things you can do with LinkedIn. I can talk about that forever. Um, there's a lot that I know and there's so much that I don't. I'm continuing to learn about this tool every day. To me, it is, um, as basically uh, an extrovert on steroids, it looked like um, an incredible opportunity to network a whole lot more than just in your town you are networking literally all over the globe and you can meet all sorts of folks you can follow all sorts sorts of folks um I, I, i've been impressed by uh like you said just how much information how many posts are out there that link to job search information mm -hmm. uh local statistics uh, or global statistics it really is a, a powerful tool and, and like you were talking about, your profile is how you stand out um, and, and you use uh, the, the phrases that your industry uses or what you want to attract, uh, attract attention to yourself using. How, how did you go about creating your profile? What kind of philosophy did you use? Is it just a cut and paste of your resume or, or, or more to it than that? Well, for me, it started with, yes, my resume. My, the flow of my resume, I certainly took a look at that. But I didn't just cut and paste it. There were some things that I put in my LinkedIn profile that really allowed me to um, expand on what's in my resume, provide a little bit more detail, and also share a little bit of my story. I think that's very important as well from a profile standpoint. So I was able to do that. And that then allowed me, when it came to, um, when it came to, what I wanted recruiters to see, it allowed me then to focus in even more on that. Uh, so the, the, just the resume, a resume, just posting my resume wasn't gonna work, certainly not, but having just my profile out there that is sort of a story of who Mike is and what does Mike have to offer the world in your organization is something else that I thought about as I was building my LinkedIn profile out because there's a place there where you can list your skills. You can break out your skills. People can go out and they can just, uh, they can affirm that. Uh, you can also list companies, uh, communities, community groups that you are supporting. You can go into detail on that. What, talk a little bit about these community groups. Hmm. And that is something that is important to recruiters as well. They want to see that you're doing things other than just working. So if you're learning, if you are, I love the thought of getting involved in community organizations and, and service, service type work because it allows you to grow as a leader it allows you to strengthen certain muscles that you might not get to use in a corporation because uh, many com many community groups and nonprofits are looking for volunteers and when you get involved they give you stuff to do and that allows you then to develop leadership skills that you can take back to your job and use there so really talking a little bit about your community my community work that's something that i've done is done as well and then again following companies because you can see what companies you're following and maybe what groups you're involved in that's something that I have done as well. I've joined a number of groups. And part of that was to be involved with the groups to follow what was happening in those particular organizations and also in those fields. That's important to me as well. For example, coaching, financial planning, retail when I was in retail, groups that are related to those. 
that allowed me then to continue my learning. But also, if recruiters were looking at those, they can see this person is active and interested in those particular fields that, that they are looking mm -hmm. to find a job in, you know, or change jobs and, and find a, another career. Perfect. Um, just a personal question. How, how much time do you spend? It, it, to me, a profile is a little bit like a garden. You have to tend to it kind yeah. of regularly. Uh, how, how often do you revise yours? Not very often. I, if I get an idea, if I see something, if I pick up, um, uh, if I, if I pick up again, an idea that I want to maybe incorporate into my profile, I will do that and you can find those on the internet books or what have you or one of the great ways to improve your profile is looking at someone else's finding someone who has a lot of followers someone who's active on linkedin what is in their profile that might be useful in mind how could i maybe follow this particular model in a way that applies more to me and take some of those ideas not plagiarize anything but take some of those ideas and incorporate those into your profile but I don't spend a whole lot of time on LinkedIn when it comes to tweaking my profile. I do share periodically. I do go out and follow certain things. And I do look for videos and information uh, more so than anything. When, my time, when I'm on LinkedIn, that's what I'm doing. Uh, the idea of, of borrowing some formatting or borrowing uh, the way that someone else has solved a problem, there is no harm in modeling yourself upon success. Mm -hmm. uh, none whatsoever. Um, so that, that is a great idea. Um, about profile pictures and about headshots, um, do you have any insights that you might want to share about the importance of a professional headshot? Have one. That is primary. You want a professional headshot and you want to invest the money in getting that. And that's especially for a young graduate coming out of school because that's the first thing that recruiters will see when they go to your profile, your profile picture. So you want to have a professional profile picture you don't want to have a picture from your maybe your dorm room where you were you know you weren't dressed appropriately or whatever you want to have something that's professional something that really sends the message that you want sent and you want to have one i see profiles from time to time where people don't have profile pictures mm -hmm. well if you don't have a profile picture then no one's really going to take you seriously again that attention to detail being professional being someone who has certain standards, that sends a message and you want to make sure you're sending the right message and the right message is I've got a profile that's professional, yeah, picture that's professional. To me, every time I see a profile that doesn't have a picture in it, I feel like somebody forgot something and walked away and it's not really taking it very seriously. So, yeah. yeah. Um, you don't know if, whether that's a legitimate uh, up, you know, that, that they're really keeping that particular account up or is it one that they forgot about? So. Um, yeah, that's really important. Uh, when we're on campus and while classes are in session here, uh, we do provide the opportunity for people to get uh, professional headshots for free uh, in the communications department. So I just want to put that bug out there in everybody's ear that um, uh, that's one of the services that we provide. So, uh, so yes, please take us up on that because we want to see you succeed. We want to show that you the students are, are ready to step up to the plate and accept the challenge of the professional world. So let me ask you about some keywords, um, things that you might have learned about thinking like a recruiter over the years. Um, anything that comes to mind that you might want to share with folks? Yeah, when it comes to keywords, if you're looking for a specific job, you want to think about what are some of the keywords that are relevant to that career field. And if you're looking for a job in retail, there are a number of words that are. Sourcing, I mean, there's so many product, there's there are a lot of words that are, are relevant to that particular field. So you want to think about what am I looking for and what are some of the words that are relevant for that particular field? Again, this is a great opportunity to take a look at someone who might be a CEO or what have you in an organization that you aspire to work in or a career field that you aspire to work in Take a look at their profile. What are some of the keywords in their profile? Very good. You can emulate that. I think that is that is a great way. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to create anything new. You can go and take a look at what's out there. There's also a nice blog article that I saw by a person named Erwin uh, Urban, 
and it is a practical guide to keywords in your LinkedIn profile. It is one that I would recommend that every person listening to this particular podcast go out and take a look at. Her name's E-R-I-N Urban, E-U-R-B-A-N, and she published this in, I think it was February of this, uh, no, February of 2018. But it gives you a lot of ideas, information on how to select the right keywords for your LinkedIn profile. When you think of search engine optimization, you're on the websites and all those things, those things do matter. And companies do have certain keywords that they look for when they're looking to find candidates in that sea of 575 million people on LinkedIn. So having keywords that are, that are appropriate for you based on what your, again, your why, your success, your definition of success is on LinkedIn can help you stand out. I, I just wrote that down as you were talking. I'm going to post that um, somewhere on our uh, conference center uh, library of links so people can look for that when we when we get this uh, posted and published I appreciate that that's the kind of thing that I'm always uh, all ears for so um, so thank you that's that's uh, fabulous advice I especially like the idea of stalking a CEO that you might want to uh, work for and um, borrow some phrasing from them because after all they're they're the people that are kind of writing the rule books that you want to adhere to. So uh, speaking of rules, can you think of anything off the top of your head, behaviors to avoid, any thou shalt nots that you would like to tell us about? Yeah, I would say primarily one of the things that you want to do, I, I was talking with a, someone the other day, hadn't been out of college very long, looking for a job, and I was looking at the person's profile as we were talking over the phone, and I saw a misspelled word in the summary section. So you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of misspelled words in your LinkedIn profile. You want to make sure that your sentence structure is appropriate, you know, and correct and all those things. So you want the grammatical pieces, you want to take a look at that. But when it comes to things you want to stay away from, you don't want to treat LinkedIn as you do Instagram or as you would Instagram or, or say Facebook or some of these other platforms that are out there. LinkedIn is more of a business, is more of a professional type of uh, social media, social media tool. So you, I would stay away from all the things that I wouldn't want my uh, future employer to see. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that can cover a lot of things. It can cover a lot of things. If you, yes, it would. <laughs> I want to go back to something you said earlier, oh, okay. Jimmy, about the profile picture that at the university, you and the team, you are actually providing those for free to students. Are you providing those to students? Yes. That is wonderful. And I want to encourage everyone listening to this. If you're a student, please take advantage of that. That is, that's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And it's a great uh, gift, I would say, in many respects. But it's something that you will have to take advantage of. And I encourage you to do so. Please do. All right. We, we hope so. We hope that they will. I would also like to ask folks that um, we have a, a really fantastic platform for students for uh, what is called personal career development management. So they can go in and manage the career development aspects that are important to them. It's called Handshake. Now, the students on campus are probably sick and tired of hearing me talk about Handshake because I talk about it all the time. But it really is a place where you can basically uh, run a dress rehearsal of your resume, your LinkedIn accounts, um, everything that you can post, you can store on Handshake. And you can use it to polish it up before you post it. You can share it with me. I am happy to look for those typos that could kill you or odd phrasing that might be a colloquialism or a passive voice versus active voice. Um, those types of things are, are things that I love to work with people on. So I would also invite folks to, to send me stuff and let's talk about your LinkedIn profile before you go public with it. So, um, or if you have gone public with it, I'll be happy to take a look. So, um, so I just really want to, to thank you for all of this, Mike, um, I, I think these are insights that are extremely valuable, and uh, I hope that our students 
uh, who are listening to this will take advantage of uh, your wisdom and insights on this. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this up by, uh, by saying that um, uh, we are also going to do a conversation, Mike and, and me, on mentors and mentorships. So look for that pretty soon as well. And uh, it's a, an incredible opportunity in a professional environment and in one's personal or professional life to gain knowledge, wisdom, and insight on all aspects of life and work and the balance uh, that, that comes, uh, well, and, and the efforts of balancing all of that. So, um, Mike, thank you so much. Jimmy, can I say one thing before you cut us, before, before we're done? Or are Absolutely. we done already? Okay. I would encourage you to, to join Link to Asheville, that group. Mm -hmm. That would be a great thing to do as a student. You're at Mars Hill. There's a Link to Asheville, Link to Asheville group that you can join. So I would apply to join that. I would also ask that you send me an invite. I would love to be connected with you on LinkedIn. So please send an invite. Fantastic. I'm done. Well, okay. Well, thank you again, Mike. And um, we will see you again soon. And I look forward to seeing you and your wife here on campus when we can all get back together again. Thank you again, Jim. It's great to be with you. Take care. Thank you.